Hillbilly Elegy is the brand new Netflix um, original film starring Amy Adams, Glenn Close, Gabriel Brasso, Haley Bennett, Frida Pinto, and Owen Azalos, and tells a story about a Yale law student who's drawn back to his hometown uh, when he grapples with family history, Appalachian values, and the American dream. Um, this movie is rated R and is an hour and 56 minutes based off of a true story adaptation from a book. My name is Max, and we're going back to a brand new Netflix review here on Max Talks. Moving before we get into this review, guys, the best way to support this channel is to hit that like button. Also, please uh, comment down below your thoughts. Were you really excited for this movie? Tell me your overall thoughts. Did you see the trailer? If you've seen this movie, is this one of your favorites, least favorite? Tell me all your thoughts on this non-spoiler movie in the description below. Also, if you're new to the channel, thank you for joining me. Please hit that subscribe button and hit that and ring that bell for notifications. If you like Netflix reviews, TV show reviews, just movie reviews in general and other stuff in those areas. So let's get into this review. So again, guys, this is based off of a, uh, it's based off a book that is based on the true story. The person who wrote the book is the name of J.D. Vance, and he is basically what probably the main character in the movie. You're kind of getting this movie from his perspective on his family. And this is also directed by Ron Howard. So pretty high expectations heading into this movie because Amy Adams is in this movie, who is my favorite. I think she's my favorite. She, well, I don't think. She is my favorite actress uh, in Hollywood, and I believe she's one of the best, if not the best, actor working today. She does, she's always money. She normally chooses her projects pretty closely. Um, and whenever she's in the movie, I normally go and see it for sure. Glenn Close was just that. We, everyone thought she was going to win the Oscar a couple years ago for her performance. Uh, but she is in this movie. Haley Bennett, who we just who had just saw on Devil all the time. She's popping in a lot of stuff now. Big fan of hers. Frida Pinto is in here. also liked her in the stuff she is in. So high expectations, really good cast, based off a true story drama, very Oscar Beatty film. And then a couple weeks ago, this movie was absolutely tortured by the critics. Um, it's currently rotten on Rotten Tomatoes with a 25%. People are saying this is one of the worst movies of the year. So everyone's saying, well, throw this movie away in all the Oscar talks. Um, and also I've heard stuff from the other side, people saying that this is actually a good movie, great performances that could be nominated. So it's weird. This movie is pretty much divided. And I'll tell you about what my thoughts are right now. So let's go through the positives, then I'm going to go my negatives, and then I'll give you my overall score. So overall, guys, I think this cast does the best job that it was given, honestly. Um, so you're kind of promoted that Amy Adams is kind of the main character of the movie, but I wouldn't really say she's the main character yet. She's in kind of the movie the most out of the side characters, but there's always J.D. Vance involved, because obviously it's taken from the book that he wrote about his family story, and Gabriel Basso plays the older version of JD, and you have Owen um, Estalos, who plays the younger JD. So you kind of go back and forth throughout this movie of JD in, as a kid in the 90s to JD where he is in 2011. So that, all of that stuff, you're kind of going back and forth between the past and the present a lot. And you know it's a true story heading in. So I was really interested in this movie, and Amy Adams does do a good job in the movie. She basically plays. She's a very, she's addicted to drugs. Heroin is kind of the main thing they talk about with her involving pills, that type of stuff in this movie. And you kind of learn more things. Glenn Close plays Amy Adams' uh, mother. Um, Haley Bennett and Gabriel Brasso, uh, they play Amy Adams' uh, children in this movie. And Frida Pinto plays uh, J.D. Vance's um, girlfriend in the movie as well. So those are all kind of the roles there. And Amy Adams is really, really good in the movie. Um, she doesn't get an Oscar moment. And I was kind of hoping she would because obviously she gets nominated for most of the things that she is in normally. Uh, performances like she was just last nominated for Vice. She's done Arrival, American Hustle, Nocturne. All these performances do get her Oscar uh, consideration usually. And she is really good in this movie. And the character should lend herself normally in a, in, a, in a better movie to get her some Oscar or award nomination contention. But the, the dialogue that she delivers isn't always the greatest, uh, the stuff that's coming out of her mouth. And then no, no character really evolves. Well, I'll get to that in a bit. Glenn Close, for me, is easily the strongest performance in the movie. Um, she is the more, she's probably the most interesting character of the whole film. And I'm saying that because I'm the biggest Amy Adams fan. And again, she is great in this movie. She's watchable. Most of this cast really is watchable, but Glenn Close easily is, the, for my opinion, the standout of the movie. 
Uh, she plays the grandmother, and I'm not going to get into the backstory about her. Watch the movie if you wanted to learn about that. But again, non spoiler review. But she does get some. She's people are saying if everyone, if anyone's going to get nominated, it would be her, and I would kind of agree to that. Um, she does a great job in the movie, and easily the strongest aspect of the movie is her relationship with her grandson JD, which isn't explored enough. But when it happens, um, they have great chemistry on screen. The younger version uh, with with her and you do feel the relationship when they get a chance to be together. Haley Bennett's in the movie and she is going through a lot as well. She plays again, as I said, Amy Adams' daughter, who is JD's sister. And she's also going through a lot. She gets married and has kids very, very young. Um, and she's going through a lot. But again, the whole point of this movie is that JD, who's played by Brasso in the older version, is trying to become this lawyer. And she, he just wanted to move out of this area in the Appalachian Mountains, uh, where all the hillbillies are in, you know, in this perspective. And just to make something out of his life. Um, his mom was super, super smart, but got stuck in her own way uh, because of her upbringing with her parents. And, and Haley Bennett stuck there because she was a lot older than JD and she's stuck trying to take care of her mom. And there's just a lot going on in this movie. Um, the JD performances are okay. And I want to get to, I think the younger version was a bit stronger. Had a, the younger version had a lot more to do than the older version of JD as well. Also, the set pieces, everything looks really nice in this movie. It's really, it's shot very well. Um, Ron Howard's the director. It's finally directed, nothing special, but it's there. And again, the story is interesting enough as you get towards the ending. It does have some satisfying emotional moments. I'm never close to crying or anything, but there's some satisfying elements towards the third act that I think they do really, really well. I would say the ending is easily the strongest of the movie. The last, I would say, 15, 20 minutes are actually good to solid. So it was a good way to end the movie, but as a whole, guys, let's get into the negatives. This is a huge letdown for me because, I, as I said, I heard all the negative, I heard all the negative reviews that most of the people said about this movie, and I didn't even want to think about it because I love Amy Adams. My favorite actress must watch for me. I love this cast. Ron Howard, who for me is hit or miss most of the time and more times hits. So I was really hoping this movie could work, but it sadly just doesn't come together nearly as good as it thinks it is. This movie easily could have been an Oscar movie, but this just feels like a movie that's Oscar baby more than a real Oscar movie. And that is a huge disappointment from the people that behind and in front of the screen. Um, as a whole, the story itself is told very wonky. I'm not sure if Ron Howard chose to do the story like that, or if this is how the book adapted the, the actual true events of the movie, but the way the movie presents the story is very all over the place. As I said earlier, it goes from back and forth between JD as a kid and JD as an adult, and they try to feel like they force stuff from JD's past to kind of set up something that he does in the future, and it feels very, very forced. They also try to add in that JD has a girlfriend, Frida Pinto, who I actually really like in this movie. Frida Pinto does a great job with a very minimal screen time she gets. But they don't add enough to, her, to their relationship. He has a girlfriend, and the whole thing is that she's Indian, and she wouldn't think that her family would be accepted that. And there was a lot more to their relationship that could have been explored that wasn't. Um, and it, they, they could have done a lot more. Their relationship was there. The chemistry was there between Basso and Pinto, but it wasn't explored nearly enough as it should have been. It could have been a lot more emotional throughout the movie, but it just didn't work as well. And as I said, the characters just don't evolve over time. As we said, we go back and forth, but none of the characters change except JD. And maybe that's the point of the movie, but it, ju it just doesn't come across well whatsoever. Haley Bennett has, is in the movie. Um, that's all I can say. Uh, she's good, as I said earlier, but she feels very pointless, and they try to give her her own storyline as well, but you don't feel her relationship at all with JD during the movie, because during the young stuff, you don't get any of their relationship whatsoever. She just feels forced into the movie. Now, obviously, of course, she has to be in the movie because that's what the true story is, but if she's going to be in the movie this degree, they have to give Haley Bennett more to work with. And I said, Amy Adams, and really, the, overall, guys, the big issue with the movie is who are you rooting for in the movie? Most of these characters are very, very unlikable. And yes, because of their journey and their upbringing, and I understand a lot of people have gone through this, but I think the movie could have explored that some of these characters 
have good in them, especially they try to really bang home that even though Amy Adams is doing this and doing all these other bad things, there's still good in her. And they try to bang you over the head with that. And I'm cool with that because I want to see that come true. But you don't really get to see that much good from her. You see glimpses, maybe a scene or two. We don't get enough to believe that she's actually a good person. And I, I wish, because it seems like she really could be a good person, but the movie doesn't really give you hope that a lot of these characters, Glenn Close's character, she doesn't really seem that likable. Amy Yav's character doesn't seem that likable. Even JD at times doesn't seem likable. The movie just, it's, it's also very depressing. It's a very tough movie to watch, especially during quarantine, where there's so much negativity going on. This is a pretty brutal movie to watch. As the Haley Bennett, for example, was in a movie earlier this year called Devil All the Time. And that was a brutal, depressed movie as well. But the story was way more fascinating in that movie than it is here. Um, this movie just felt bland. That's, that's kind of the best thing to say about this movie. I mean, the, the main thing I want to point out is that this movie feels very, very bland. And it's amazing to say that because it's Ron Howard directing it, top tier Oscar winning actors in front of the screen. And this is the result of the movie. The story could have been delved into more. It's two hours. The first hour is boring, boring, boring. It's, it takes a lot to get through. I had to click on the timer to see. I said, how many got, I had one more hour left of this movie. It is long. It's one hour, 56 minutes, which doesn't, it seems like a normal movie, but it feels very long. They try to give you glimpses of positivity and then they drown you with negativity. And the movie needs to be a little more uplifting because it is trying to have a message and it's based off a true story. All the characters You'll see at the end what happened to them. But it's trying to send you a message. And I think that instead of drowning us in negativity and then all of a sudden saying, here's, we have a message, maybe move that message in without the script. Keep the message throughout most of the scenes. So you actually feel like there's hope with these characters. There's hope that these people are good people. But instead, it kind of throws that away. So honestly, guys, this will be down as one of the most disappointing movies of the year. My favorite actress is in this movie. And couldn't go away. So guys, I can't give this an above average review because I was disappointed. This movie could have been so much better. And I'm going to give it a two out of five stars, which I'm going to give around a 42%, guys. It's a below average movie. I'm kind of right in the middle. It's not one of the worst movies of the year. I've seen a lot more worse movies than this one, but I have seen a lot better than this one. And start to see my list and of the year and say, wow, that movie was better than this. And I'm gonna be saying that all year long. So before I go guys, tell me in the comments, do you agree with my opinion of Hillby, Hillbilly Elegy? Tell me, did you like it, not like, do you agree with my opinion? Like this video, subscribe, ring that bell because I have some new videos coming your way. The Christmas Chronicles 2 comes out tomorrow. Also Super Intelligence, I believe, comes out on Thanksgiving. So uh, once again, guys, if you're not gonna join me tomorrow, have a great Thanksgiving, guys. And I'll hopefully see you guys on my next couple of reviews very, very soon.